When it comes to retro gaming, a CRT and the original hardware is of course the golden standard. These days, however, that can cost hundreds of dollars and take a lot of space, which may or may not go well with your living situation or your wife. The only other option is to use emulators. There are, however, two big problems when it comes down to emulating on modern machines, which seem to be the main reason why emulators get such a bad reputation. With few exceptions, games in the past were designed with 4.3 display in mind. When you display them on a modern display, you end up with two big black bars taking a quarter of your screen. Some people don't mind it, but for me personally, it completely breaks the immersion of the game. One way to deal with this is to simply stretch the image. Yeah, no, this is absolute blasphemy if you ask me, and makes my head hurt. So whatever you do, gaming on a modern display is never going to feel close to the real thing. The only valid option, in my view, is to simply use a 4.3 display, but more about that later. Another huge problem with emulation is input lag. Lots of old games are very sensitive to timing your actions accurately, so when the game responds a third of a second late, then the whole experience falls apart. Emulators take a lot of heat for this, but as you will see, especially with casual modern machines, the input lag comes from different sources. Let's recap real quick what input lag is and where it comes from. If you test your controller in the operating system, when you press a button on it, that signal is sent to your computer, processed and displayed on the screen. All of this takes time. This time is usually very small and is measured in milliseconds, which is one thousandth of a second. We will call this the base hardware and operating system input lag. By far, especially on modern systems, unless you're using high-end gaming monitors, the biggest de delay that can happen is in the screen itself. With all the bells and whistles of modern displays, their processing power hasn't quite kept up. So for example, my new LG TV alone has a lag of about 110 milliseconds outside of game mode. My other modern i7 laptop with a 4K display also has 111 milliseconds of input lag. One of the main reasons some pro gamers buy a CRT cathode ray tube monitor is because it offers zero input lag. So what happens if you want to play a game? Instead of displaying the button pressed on the controller, then it needs to be first processed by the emulator of choice. As we will see, the speed of each emulator and even specific games can vary quite widely. Only after that is complete, then the results are displayed on the screen. There is a very easy, cheap and comfortable solution to both of these problems that doesn't seem to get recommended very often online as people will either recommend full retro or try to emulate on modern machines. The beautiful solution here is that you can meet somewhere in the middle, which is to emulate on a semi-retro machine that has a native 4.3 LCD with a resolution of 124 by 768 and runs at least a Windows XP. The main advantage to this solution is that you can find laptops in excellent condition for as low as $30, which is exactly what I did. I got an HP Compaq NC6210 and turned it into a dedicated retro gaming machine. You can find the technical spec details in the description of this video as well as the links to the optional controllers. As I love playing arcade games in MAME, multiple arcade machine emulator, I got myself an arcade stick. With older machines like these, chances are the real-time clock battery is dead, which was my case as well. As it has been quite annoying setting up the time on each boot up, let's go ahead and replace the battery right now. Luckily for me, the disassembly is a pretty straightforward task.
gave it a few hours and continued in the evening. Everything seems to be working fine, no more losing the correct time. So let's see now the amounts of input lag we have on this machine. What we are going to do is shoot a video in 240 frames per second, open that video in Blender and simply count the amount of frames it takes from the moment a button is pressed to the moment an action is registered on the screen. We register a button is pressed by looking at the clicking sound at the first marker. In the example shown, it has taken 36 frames for the whole process to finish. At this speed, this means a delay of about 140 milliseconds. We will do this under various scenarios, operating system level, Modora 64, emulator, DOSBox, PlayStation, etc. So let's go ahead and record some videos. As we repeat the previous exercise in many different situations, this is the result we get. Let's go ahead and see how each scenario has played out. While everybody has a different requirement for what is acceptable as input lag, I have personally found out that it is of course dependent a lot on the type of game. Some games have a noticeable input lag even on the original hardware, keep that in mind. Generally though, I found anything that is ranging from 80 to 150 milliseconds to be quite okay and quite playable. While anything above 250, it becomes just extremely distracting. First is the operating system level using the USB wired stick. We see that the Compact has a base input lag of only 54 milliseconds. As a reference point, my modern i7 4K laptop has a base input lag of 111 milliseconds. Now the only way to reduce this is to get a high-end gaming monitor, which will be a lot more expensive than the $30 that I paid for the Compact. I was very much surprised to see that the PlayStation emulator achieved the best result, even though the compact laptop only has an integrated graphics card. The emulator itself added only about 20 milliseconds of delay, as most of the delay was actually produced by the wireless gamepad. In this case I'm using a very cheap Vacos wireless gamepad. This could of course be further improved by getting a cable gamepad. DOSBox also achieved excellent results with under 100 milliseconds of input lag. On a machine like this though, you could easily install DOS directly and run most of the games without emulation, further improving the already excellent latency. But I just didn't want to bother as DOSBox is just awesome. Here we can see how each game can vastly affect the input delay. We are using MAME32, the multiple arcade machine emulator, in direct draw mode. I was very surprised to see Golden Axe with such a big delay of 200 milliseconds. But then again, as I finished it many times at the arcades, I remember even the original one seemed to be a bit sluggish. I would be interested to see what's the performance of the real one. On the other hand, Rolling Thunder plays great with about 125 milliseconds and Moon Patrol even goes under 100. Now keep in mind that about 50 milliseconds of these are at the operating system level. So the emulator in some case adds only another 50. Then we have the VICE emulator for the Commodore 64. The input lag is pretty ok and the game still quite playable. It could be further reduced by removing image processing filters like scan lines. But for some reason on the C64, after staring at them for years on my CRT, the games just don't feel right without the scan lines. So I'll just keep them. And now, let's play some games and see this excellent machine in action.
And when I get tired of retro gaming, I can always borrow my wife's copy of Diablo 2 and play it on the machine that it was always meant to be played. Yeah, she is perfect. <laughs>